Good morning, guys. Good morning, guys. Okay, so for our devotional today, we're talking about persisting. Persisting. And the scripture is Matthew 6, 32 through 33. It says, Your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. And she says, My 13-year-old daughter happily eats a variety of foods. Cheese, bologna, tortillas, stir-fry, broccoli, chicken, rice, salami, shrimp, pickles, peppers, you name it, and she will eat it. But she draws the line when it comes to spinach, scrunching up her face and looking for an opportunity for an opportunity to dump it into the disposal when she thinks her mother isn't looking. Last night, Lucy decided to spice up this odious vegetable with a little hot sauce. The combination was so successful that she surprised me by asking for seconds. Why am I telling you about my daughter's conversion to spinach? Only because it illustrates the power of persistence. It took repeated tries for Lucy to discover the breakthrough that would make eating spinach delightful. It can be like that in our search for peace. We have to keep persevering, especially when it comes to turning away. Hold on, guys. It's really early this morning, so the thing with the light. Okay. Let me go back to where we were. We have to keep persevering, especially when it comes to turning away from our natural desires and staying faithful to the teachings of Christ. Jesus says, if someone slaps you on one cheek, offer the other cheek also. If someone demands your coat, offer your shirt also. That's Luke 6, 29. Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Matthew 5, 44. Do not judge others and you will not be judged. Matthew 7, 1. Don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? Matthew 6, 31. I tell you the truth. If you have faith and don't doubt, you can do things like this and much more. You can even say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. Matthew 21, 21. When it comes to God's peace, Jesus acts so much, but he also delivers so much. Let's continue. To follow him, trusting that as we do, he will work even deeper levels of shalom into our lives. And the prayer is, Lord, thank you for not only telling me the way to live, but for showing me how. Make me like you, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen, guys. So I'm going to leave it on for a couple seconds. And today, um, I know we skipped the letter X. Um, that was intentional because I really wasn't hearing anything for the letter X. So we're on Y. And today we're talking about um, yoke. That's our letter for today is Y. And our word is yoke. Um, and our Bible scriptures that we're going to read today, we're going to read Galatians 5, 1, 13 through 26. Um, Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Lamentations 3, 27. Galatians 3 28 and Amos 3 3 and you know the question um that I have for you guys that I wrote as God was leading is what are you yoked to and who are you yoked to you know so think about that um even as we begin reading what are you yoked to and who are you yoked to and you know um I'm grabbing the bible but you know the animals um in the bible days um some of them are still like that um today but the animals um they will put the, the the yoke on them so that they each could go in the same direction and that the work they could both pull like their share but they could both work in the same direction what depend it depended on like how many it was but like if it was like they'll put it on their necks like let's say it was two of them they'll put the yoke on one of the animals necks. like let's say it was like an oxen or something or whatever animal it was and they'll put it on them so that they could pull in that direction to be easier and if one tried to pull in the opposite direction the other person the, not the other person lord it's like i'm recording this one a little bit earlier guys because today is a little bit busier but i still want to make sure that you know i'm consistent with getting the word out so i'm up early early so y'all gonna get this early earlier today but um not the other person y'all can see i'm just waking up <laughs> the other animal would feel the screen you know so 
you know think about that what are you yoked to who are you yoked to you know you yoked to christ you yoked with christ uh you yoked with other things or people like what are you yoked to who are you yoked to so we're going to get into the reading now i'm going to go to galatians Bear with me a second. Y'all can grab y'all Bibles. I always try to give y'all the scripture so y'all can know where we're reading from. You know, if you want to go in your Bibles and read. Or you could just look at the screen. It's totally fine. Let me find Galatians, guys. Just bear with me a moment. Here we go. Um, and we do have full in-depth series on all these things we're talking about today. The scriptures in the entire books with them like amos galatians limitations matthew so galatians 5 we're not going to read all of it but it's talking about freedom in christ and uh life by the spirit so verse 1 says it is for freedom that christ has set us free stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery so as there we can just see as there are good yokes there's also bad yokes, you know, as there's unrighteous um, yokes, there's righteous yokes because God could have you um, yoked and connected with the right people in him for his will and purpose. But then the enemy will try to have uh, people yoked and connected uh, for his will and purpose. So the, the yoke matters. The relationship matters. The spirit behind it matters, you know. So that's Galatians 5. 1. Now we're going to go to... um verse 13 to 26 okay it says you my brothers and you can read it in full context like those all them verses but we're just going to read verse 1 and then 13 through 26 you could read them or you could just check out when we did a galatian series but it says you my brothers were called to be free but do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature and the sinful nature is um the flesh for the sinful nature desires what is contrary. See how I just skipped, guys? Sorry about that. Y'all are waking up for real. Sorry about that, guys. Go back up. How you got from 13 to 16, girl? You, my brothers, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature, the flesh, right? Rather, serve one another in love. The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. So that's Leviticus 19, 18. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. So now let's talk about life by the spirit. So I say live by the spirit. And you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit. And the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. And we can read Romans 7 with that. Um, well, I'm not going to read it this morning. But like you could read it or check out the Romans series. But I'm just giving you a cross-reference scripture that tie into this. And so many other scriptures that we've talked about when it comes to flesh and spirit and all those different things from new and old testament we have a lot of scriptures talking about that but for the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit guys i'm not going to keep fixing this light i'm not going to keep fixing this light. i'm just going to just read yeah the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature they are in conflict with each other so that you do not do what you want but if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Because like, uh, he's t that's what he's talking about here. Just some That's some of what he was talking about um, there. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery. And I didn't have this on here, but we're going to read from Revelation. The Lord is telling me to read that too. So we'll, read, we'll look at that right after this. Okay, Im sexual immorality. Impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you as I did before. This is the Apostle Paul talking to the Church of Galatia. That those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. 
but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. So now we're going to go to um, Revelations. This is the one we're going to read. Revelations 22. It was Revelations 22. Also, it was Revelations 21. But not all of it. Let me see if I'm going to read all of this. I don't know why, but he's telling me to read all of it. 21 and 22, so I'm going to do it. Okay, we're going to talk about the New Jerusalem and the River of Life. But the parts that I want you guys to focus in on for this video, for what we talk about today, yoke, is of uh, 21 verse 8, Revelations. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts like the into voodoo, the witchcraft, all that stuff, the idolaters and all liars. And it goes beyond magic arts is beyond witchcraft and voodoo and all it goes really deep the idolaters and all liars their place will be in the fairy lake of burning sulfur this is the second death we do have a revelation series so we read all of it and then another one um for you guys to focus on as we read this is revelation 22 14 through 15 and sorry it's just like this i had this bible for a couple years now so well this particular one because the other one was older, but it this had got rubbed. But I was like, uh, uh I need my Bible, so I had taped it back. I think it got rubbed last year. I don't know how. It got end up getting rubbed by accident. I was getting something, and it just rubbed. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may go through the gates into the city. Outside are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood so it is important what we yoke to not just in this life because it's going to determine who, who, what and what kingdom we're yoked to in the next life it, it, it is it's important what and who we're yoked to and i believe it's important physically and spiritually in all areas of our life excuse me so let's read um guys the new jerusalem then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them they will be his people and god himself will be with them and be their god he will wipe every tear from their eyes there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away he who was seated on the throne said i am making everything new then he said write this down for these words are trustworthy and true he said to me it is done i am the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end to him who is thirsty i will give to drink without cost from the spring of the water of life he who overcomes will inherit all this and i will be his god and he will be my son but the cowardly the unbelieving the vow the murderers the sexually immoral those who practice magic arts the idolaters and all liars their place will be in the fairy lake of burning sulfur this is the second death one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and said to me come i will show you the bride the wife of the lamb and he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city jerusalem coming down out of heaven from god just a quick sidebar uh apostle john is getting this revelation um on the isle of patmos where they isolated him and tried to kill him and he went through much persecution and the lord showed him this great revelation in his old age you know, um, being an apostle of Christ and have witnessed Christ here on earth and even after um, Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. And the Lord shows him this this book 
in this revelation this this great revelation and these things you know so many thousands and thousands of years ago and that's another word for somebody you cannot underestimate your your um, relationship to the Lord and allowing the Lord to be Lord in your life is spending time with the Lord and being available to him and trusting him through you know through ups and downs you know through it all because he still can do some amazing great things you know physically people would look at him and say well you're going through that you, you're doing all that you know but you're going through all that so which, where's your value like worldly people but if you look at this spiritually and the christians this man was so blessed look at this great revelation you know what I mean? And that's how it is for a lot of the people in the Bible. Whether they had it, we did videos talking about this. Whether they had it or not, you know, if true riches are found in Christ. True riches are found in Christ. That's financially, that's spiritually, that's physically, that's relationally, that's emotionally. That's all areas of your life. True, I said true riches. Because the enemy can give people, his people riches too. But that's not about nothing if you don't have Christ. So that's why I say true riches are found in Christ. Okay, and he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God and its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel, like a jasper clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with twelve gates and with twelve angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. The wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. The angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city, its gates, and its walls. The city was laid out like a square, as long as it was wide. He measured the city with the rod and found it to be 12,000 stadia. Now, I'm not going to do the math today, guys, so I'm just going to put it on the footnotes so you guys can see. 12,000 stadia in length and as wide and high as it is long. He measured its wall and it was 144 cubits thick by man's measurement, which the angel was using. The wall was made of jasper in the city of pure gold, as pure as glass. The foundations of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third child Sidoni. The fourth emerald, the fifth glory to God, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth carnelian, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth mm, chrysophrase, the eleventh Jason, sometimes the names, guys, and the twelfth ameth amethyst. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. The great street of the city was of pure gold, like transparent glass. I did not see a temple in the city because the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gives it light and the Lamb is its lamp. The nations will walk by its light and the kings of the earth will bring their splendor into it. On no day will its gates ever be shut, for there will be no night there. The glory and honor of the nations will be brought into it. Nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does what is shameful or deceitful, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now we're going to talk about the river of life. This is the last chapter in Revelation 22. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street to the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life. Yeah, the light shifts on. I just have to read. During the tree, hold on. Each side of the river stood the tree of life bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. 
They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. Eternity, as I've been saying for years, guys, and y'all know this, eternity is forever. There's no waking up from it. There's no, am I dreaming, pinch me. There's no, I'm taking a nap and I'll get up. Eternity is forever. If people going to be in hell, it's going to be forever. Forever is it for it's forever. People gonna be in heaven. It's forever. It's forever. It's forever. And they will reign forever and ever. The angel said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, sent his angel to show his servants the things that must soon take place. Jesus is coming. Behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy in this book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things. And when I had heard and seen them, I fell down to worship the feet of the angel who had been showing them to me. And a lot of times throughout the Bible, a lot of them would do that, you know, but the angel always say no, you know, to them. And it's like, stand them up, you know. But he said to me, do not do it. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers, the prophets, and of all who keep the words of this book. Worship God. Then he told me, that's even deep. Thank you, Lord. Because you see what Satan he would want that glory. He's a fallen angel. You know, he used to be a, a, a heavenly angel, you know, and he's a fallen demonic angel, you know, so he will want that glory. But this is a righteous angel. This is an angel of God, not a demon, you know, and he say, no, worship God. So that's another thing, you know, by people fruit, you will know them, even though angels are spirits. But we can look at this naturally, too. As we see this spiritually, we see who's for Christ and who's not for him, you know. But then you can look naturally, too. By people's fruits, you will know them. That's Bible. You know, we have been talking about that over the years. But he said, uh-uh, worship God. That he told me, do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book because the time is near. Let him who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let him who is vowed continue to be vowed. Let him who does right continue to do right. And let him who is holy continue to be holy. Behold, <clears throat> excuse me, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to everyone according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes that they may have the right to the tree of life and may go through the gates into the city excuse me guys outside are the dogs <clears throat> those who practice magic arts the sexually immoral the murderers the idolaters and everyone who loves and practices falsehood i jesus have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches and i can't give you the footnotes because it's like it had got like that but it says plural <laughs> I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come. And let him who hears say, come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. And whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds anything to them, God will add to him the place described in this book. And if anyone takes words away from this book of prophecy, God will take away from him his share in the tree of life and in the holy city which are described in this book he who testifies to these things says yes i am coming soon amen come lord jesus the grace of the lord jesus be with god's people amen and i encourage you if you've never read the book of revelations read it or if god keeps showing you a certain book in the bible or giving you certain scriptures you personally to read and he confirming them scriptures to you. He is trying to tell and show you something. You just, um, you know, just read it and hear what he's saying to you. But that could be a life changing word for you or for nations or for others. You know, you get in God's presence and, you know, that relationship. He can reveal himself how he want to, wherever he want to. But Matthew 11, we're going to do a few more guys. Matthew 11 is Jesus and John the Baptist. Woe on our repentant series, cities, rest for the weary, which that's what we're going to read right now. Uh, we're going to read um, Matthew 11, 25 through 30. And the focal points is 28 through 30. Okay. 
So at that time, and you can read it in full context to say why I am saying at that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. And you can see what he's talking about. The woe on unrepentant cities. Uh, he began to, to denounce the cities um, in which most of his miracles had been performed because they didn't repent. And he's talking about some other things. Um, he revealed them to little to little children yes father for this was your good pleasure all things have been committed to me by my father no one knows the son except the father and no one knows the father except the son and those to whom the son chooses to reveal him here is the focal of scriptures come to me all you who are weary and burdened and i will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me for i'm gentle and humble in heart and you will find a rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now we're going to go to um, before I go to Lamentations 3 in Amos, let's read Galatians 3.28 while we are ready back here in the New Testament. Galatians 3 is um, faith or observance of the law, the law and the promise and sons of God. But I'm going to read, let's read verse 26 through 29. Sons of God, you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. If you've never read this, I encourage you to read the full chapter so you get in the full context. But like I said, it's talking about faith or observance of the law and the law and the promise. But for all of you who were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And let me pause this real quick because I don't want it to time out. Find Galatians, uh, not Galatians, Lamentations. Lamentations 3. Doesn't really say what it's talking about. It does, but like it don't give us like a title or a topic. I know we did a Lamentation series, but 3 would be talking about thoughts on suffering, hoping God. Okay. Okay, I have 27 on here. It says, it is good for a man to bear the yoke while he is young. So let's read 25 through 27. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly or patiently for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke while he is young. And then it continues on. It's, it's long. It's like 66 verses, but it's saying a lot of um, good nuggets and different things. So, the last one is Amos 3.3. 3. As soon as I can find it, God, I think it's back this way. Just spare me a second, God. And I pray that you guys was blessed by this devotional this morning. If Bible study... I'm going to tell y'all before we close what we're going to be talking about tomorrow. So Amos, I got on nine. Amos three is witnesses summoned against Israel. But I'm going to read verse three. It says, do two walk together unless they have agreed to do so. Some translations say, how can two walk together unless they agree? And you could read it in full context, but that's the scripture. Verse three, do two walk together unless they have agreed to do so. And then it gives you different scenarios and uh, different things. But to God be the glory, guys. That's our devotional for today. Persisting from the ant spangler and then yoke. And tomorrow, Lord's will, we're going to be talking about the devotional is going to be talking about. I doubt it. And then um, we're going to be talking about zeal. We'll be talking about zeal. And then Thursday and Friday, because that's going to conclude our letter from A to Z. So tomorrow is Z. So that's the last one since October, beginning October 1st till now. 
So tomorrow's the last one. Then Thursday and Friday, we'll do the devotional, Lord's Will, and just read like a Bible, one Bible chapter. And then Saturday is the prayer. And then November is the new, the new theme, the new series. So everyone have a blessed, beautiful day. Thanks for tuning in. God bless you. God keep you. God reward you. God protect you, your family. May God bless and touch your soul, spirit, body, finances, relationships, uh, your ministry, your business, your purpose, your destiny, your job, your life, your home, every area and everything concerning you in that situation that you've been praying about. I just pray that you allow God to have his way and that God's will be done in your life. And God bless you. Amen. I'll see y'all back tomorrow. Lord's will. God bless.